We want to take a moment tonight to highlight a milestone for women, in particular black women in the U.S. military. And you don't have to go too far back in history to understand why. It wasn't until 1948 that women were officially allowed to serve in the armed forces, and women weren't invited to attend the military academies until 1976. At the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, the highest position of leadership is that of brigade commander. This is a job that requires outstanding leadership and oversees daily activities and training of the academy class, including morale. The first female to receive that title came in 1992. There have only been 15 more since. This semester, the academy selected the first black female to lead her class as brigade commander. Her name is Sydney Barber. She is 21 years old, and she was chosen for her leadership, vision, and focus on making the world a better place. And I I had the pleasure of speaking with Sydney earlier this week. Well, uh, it is such a pleasure to talk to you, Sydney. First of all, congratulations on your accomplishments so far. You are now the 16th woman to hold this top leadership position for midshipmen and the first black woman also to earn that title and to lead 4,500 of your classmates. Such a significant moment uh, for so many reasons. Uh, walk us through what this means to you. I am extremely humbled by especially knowing the context of what this billet um, entails and, and what how, how difficult it's been for those who have come before me and, and just hearing the struggles that, that they went to as midshipmen it puts everything in the context of me for me and, um, and, and reminds me that I'm carrying on their legacy. Walk us through the job. What is your role? What are your responsibilities as brigade commander? So as brigade commander, you are, I'm the, the representative of all 4,500 midshipmen in the brigade. So I carry out the intent of the commandant and I, um, I execute anything that, that he wants done within the brigade and that I'm the link between the brigade and midshipmen and the commandant uh, of about 30 people who report directly to me. Sydney, you were selected because of your potential to be a leader among leaders. What characteristics do you think best describe you and prepare you for this leadership role? One of my mentors always talks about like, GH3 to stay grateful, humble, hungry, and honest. And I, I've, I've taken those those attributes to heart a lot in that I always always stay grateful for everything that I have um, and keeping an attitude of, of gratitude no matter what the circumstance has is. And staying humble has been uh, just maintaining a, a, the attitude of service and that everything that I do as a leader, you, you just kind of sit on, on the bottom of the leadership paradigm and that my job is to serve those, those who I lead. Serve, so I am the servant to all 4,000 midshipmen and that's the role that I play. It's not the other way around. Setting ambitious goals with the intention of achieving them and, and just trying to see the potential both in myself and those around me, even if they can't see them, see the, the potential in themselves. And then always staying honest, being being true to myself, staying honest about um, maintaining my integrity, staying sincere in everything that I do. Uh, it has only been 44 years since Congress began allowing women to enroll in service academies. What barriers do women, and particularly women of color, still face in the armed forces? Sometimes the greatest barrier is that of in your own mind of not really seeing and not seeing someone who looks like you or someone that. Um, you can relate to hold a certain position. It's t it's hard for you to see your potential um, in pursuing that path. So um, it's just it, it's always going to be a struggle of increasing diversity and increasing representation um, in in these high leadership positions. But it's so crucial, especially in a time like this, where um, we we really do need to we need to maximize our potential as a military and as our nation. I think females and minorities are. A, a, very vast pool that are not as tapped into um, and and that's something that it, it can is really a, a point for progress for our, our military and the nation going forward. You are majoring in mechanical engineering and I also know that you started a STEM outreach program for girls. What is your message to young girls out there in pursuing those endeavors? Don't be afraid to be the first. If you don't see someone there, be, be someone that, um, that can pave the way and, and always Make sure that you don't you don't count yourself out. Um, don't be the person to count yourself out. 
there's always there's always some um or oh, keep keep trying to push the needle and i think that's what we need the most going forward in our military uh, you don't get to where you are today without sharp focus determination and a mission so what other goals are you setting for yourself personally and professionally and do you have any political aspirations my goal right now the the, sh the goal clo closest alligator to the boat is to get to graduation. It's about all the people that I started with, um, my company mates, to the people who I did plea summer with, my teammates. Um, those are the people that I, I want to see get across the finish line to walk across the stage alongside me. So, my, my personal goal is to, is to get to that, to walk across the stage, but also get all, all those people um, there with me. And then from there, I'm going to be in, in the Marine Corps. My aspiration in my life as a whole is to serve in the, in the platform that. Where, where my personal gifts and my strengths um, intersect with my passions and, and where I can serve and I can give back to the country. It's in the military than, than the military, but just the world as a whole um, in the place where I'm best fit and where I can maximize my potential um, to serve and, and to pour into the world. Midshipman Captain Sydney Barber, congratulations on all of your success. It has been a pleasure and an honor to talk to you. You're welcome back on News Nation. Anytime time. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. This has been great. <laughs> I mean, wise beyond her years, right? Mm. Uh, the role of brigade commander lasts one semester. Sydney will lead her peers through graduation. That's at the end of May. And in addition to her high marks for leadership and academics, you might have seen there uh, some photos of her uh, participating in athletics. She is on the Navy varsity track and field team. She holds the academy record for the 4 by 400 relay. I could go Ugh. on with wow. her accomplishments because there are many. But what I love that she said about sports, it taught her mental toughness. She goes, your body will fail you, but your mind will fail you before your body does. So you've got to mental, be mentally tough through all of that. Mm. Impressive. I love, I love what she said. Don't be afraid to be first. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, no ceiling gets shattered without that attitude. That was a great interview. Wow. It was, especially at the end there, because that's what I was thinking. The sky's the limit for her. What oh, do you yeah. want? What do you, I waited for her to say she wanted to be president. I know. <laughs> I, that's, that's kind of why I asked the question. Yeah. I thought maybe. And I wouldn't rule that out. I mean, I think she's, sure. she's one to watch. I love the GH3, too. Grateful, humble, hungry, and honest. Mm -hmm. Right? She's Words impressive. to live by. Yeah.